What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of In The End Podcast. Listen, we have missed you guys. We are officially in season three. Yes, That's crazy. That's right. That is absolutely insane to yeah. me. I am so glad that you were able to join us today. And we have a conversation on our hands today. Uh, I wanted us to center this conversation around desire. Uh, because I think that one of the things that really Gen Z has done a very poor job of is taming our desire. Yeah. I feel like we just go after everything that we want. And sometimes it just lacks wisdom. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to have a fun conversation today. Listen, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave us a rate. Leave us a review. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the conversation. Yeah. Uh, because I wanted, I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about it on the way here. How do you combat your desire, right? Because I know for me, we're both men. We both have desire. We both have natural instinctives. Uh, but I remember a season in my life where it was very difficult for me to sort of tame desires that I had or affinities that I had. Um, and it just felt overbearing, if I'm honest. And so how would you help someone who is... 13, 14, 15, 16, who is trying to wrestle through the desires that they feel, also knowing that they're called, God loves them, all these things. Um, how would you go about that? It's, I think desires stem from your appetite. If you continuously eat fast food, sweets, your body will always want fast food or sweets. If, if you continuously eat healthy foods, your body will crave healthy foods. I think it starts with how you wake up. Do you say anything to the Father? Do you pray? Do you do a devotional? These things, your spiritual man eventually will start to desire or weaken. You know, if the more you distract yourself from the word, it's it's the opposite polar. If you're in the word every day, your spiritual man will crave the word yeah. daily. So inevitably your desires will change. I think that all starts with how you train your mind, how you train your desires for your spiritual man. It, it all is very simple. But I think at the end of the day, your appetite is 1,000% what sets you up a week, a month, and a year from now. Bro, I, here we go. Here's, we already started this episode. I love that you mentioned appetite because I feel like that is the perfect word to describe it, right? Um, in the book of Exodus, the Israelites are on this journey out of Egypt. And the scripture says that the Israelites missed the meat that they were, that they were eating in Egypt. And so to me, it blows my mind. It baffles my mind because you miss the meat that you're eating in a season where you were a slave. You mean to tell me Pharaoh had y'all bound, but you still desire, you still have an appetite for something for a season that you were once in. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I think that what has happened for so many of us is that we have not shifted our palates with our seasons. So we're in new seasons with old palates. Mm. We're going into new territory. We're going into new spirituality. We're going into new depths with the Lord. But it's like we still have old appetites from old seasons. So, yeah, you feel this call. You feel this tug for God to do something in your life. But then you still have this desire. You still have this affinity towards something that is actually killing you. Yeah. Right. Let's. Oh, good God. Let's think about it. Uh, Samson. Homeboy literally has a grace to kill Philistines. God has gifted this man to kill Philistines. But how is he defeated? A Philistine woman. Delilah comes into his life. And since, be, and since he has an appetite, since he has a desire for this woman, it's his desire that in turn deters his destiny. Yeah. Yeah. He ends up leading, oh good God, he ends up leading a life that comes to a culmination in death because he had untamed desire. And I don't think desire is necessarily bad. Right. But if we do not tame desire, if we do not give desire boundary, then what could end up happening is we can have desires that will cause death in our life. Absolutely. See, immediately Ephesians 4 and 1 came to mind. 
And essentially it says live a life worthy of the call that you're called to live. Yeah. If I know I have a certain destination to go, why would I not then mentally, spiritually, and physically prepare myself to sustain when I'm there? Yeah. Not just to get there and then quit, but to get there and then perform the way God has called me to perform. That's good. See, bro. while if I'm as a musician, as a barber, why would I not do the groundwork first? Yeah. Why would I learn enhancements before I learn how to fade? Why would I learn chops before I learn the pocket? It, and essentially, I think when you start preparing and doing the groundwork that it, that is necessary for longevity to even exist, that goes against your natural desires. Yeah. Natural desires have a lot more power than people give it credit to because natural desires essentially follow your heart is essentially what it is. Right. And that is the most dangerous thing you can do. I really do think the heart is deceitful because I've lived through chasing my emotions, right. letting my emotions kind of take over. So when you allow yourself to, to fight those temptations, to fight flesh, again, temptation is not wrong. Temptation is going to happen. It's how you handle that temptation. Um, so living a life and knowing you have a certain call, not even if you're a pastor or a big worship leader or, or a big social media influencer, the smallest of people in our eyes have the biggest call. 100%. Everybody has a place and a rightful place. So prepare yourself for the walk that you're going to do, not just for the destination. Absolutely. I think I think it's dualistic because I love what you said about preparing yourself for the walk. Because one of the things that I think we have to become aware of is that there are always two paths. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be a fork in the road. Uh, I think it's the book of James. Let me let me double check. James chapter one. James chapter one. I want to say it's verse 15. James chapter one. Come on, y'all. If you got a Bible, turn with us. Turn with us. James chapter one. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start reading. Let's go to verse 15 real quick. James 1, verse 15, it says this. Let's go to verse 14. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Verse 15, then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So untamed desire will always cause death in your life because what the enemy does is he takes a moment. He takes a pocket. All he needs is a seed. Mm -hmm. See, we love to think that God is the one that needs a seed where where God can multiply a seed. But what we don't realize is that the principle of sowing and reaping is not just Christian. It is in the earth. Mm -hmm. It is a earthbound rule. It is an earthbound principle. So whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if I'm constantly sowing a life of fulfilling my own desire, I will find myself in death. Yeah. Yeah. I love what the verse says in verse 14. It says, then when anyone is tempted and lured away by their own desire, it's essentially what happens in the garden, right? Eve looks at the tree and everything that she sees about the fruit that's on the tree comes from her own desire. The scripture literally says that the fruit has the desire to make one wise. Well, the desire didn't come from the fruit. The desire came from Eve. And so if Eve did not have, since Eve did not have a tame or a leash on her desire, she ended up opening a door to death. Mm. See, because some of us believe that death is just physical. Death happens in a casket. But the reality is death is separation from God. So the reason why your life looks the way that it looks is because you have separated yourself from the source of life. And now you think that just because you are living a life separate from God, you have access to all of the things of God. No, you only have access to life when you're connected to the source of life. He is life support. God quite literally is the support of your life. And when you remove him, you find yourself going after your own desires. Yeah, dangerous. Very dangerous. Kind of way. It, it, it's one thing to, I think a lot of things start in the household, um, the house that you grew up in and the way you take things. Yeah. Um, watching somebody like my father as an entrepreneur, knowing that it takes time to build rapport, you know what I mean? 
So taking that to your spiritual life is really preparing, like outside of preparing yourself for a walk and a journey. What starts in the home will always affect what you do outside the house. So if I hear my parents yelling or cursing, which they don't, I know they gonna watch this. I love y'all. They don't yell, I've never heard them argue. So for me, inevitably, I search for a woman that I don't have to yell at, right. I don't have to argue with, you know? So that prepares me for wanting something. That is the appetite, the desire of what you want later on in life. This is not just fleshly, this is spiritually. So when you are unequally yoked with somebody, it will show and your spirit man will die before you know it's dead. It happens. But when you you sit, if you take a step back and, and you have to reevaluate your taste buds, what you want, what you have a taste for, a desire for. And these things won't be obvious until you soul search. You know, 100%. So people don't soul search. Yeah, bro. And even with taste buds, right? Even with desires. I remember there was a point in my life where I didn't, I could not drink coffee black. <laughs> I could not drink coffee black at all. I love black gold. I I was so disgusted by it when I was like 16, 17. I was like, bro, I can't do this. Like, this is awful. <laughs> and then one day I made myself start drinking coffee black. Mm -hmm. Like no cream, no sugar, no just drinking it black. Mm -hmm. And now it's the only way I drink my coffee. Yeah. Because what people don't realize is that your taste buds naturally reset. Mm. And you can train your taste buds to have a desire for something that you once did not desire. And see, what I think ends up happening with people is that we think that just because it's our default that it should be our desire. Mm. When God has never called man to rely on their default. You want to know what your default is? The mind of Adam. You want to know what your default is? Your sinful nature. Yeah. And so you have to rewire and reroute, and reroute yourself mm -hmm. so that you can actually have a full understanding of who, not only who God has formulated you to be, but what you need in order to become that person. Because for me, it's like when I was in the gym, I knew I wanted to cut. Mm -hmm. So I had to adjust my appetite to what I wanted to see. Mm. And so if I know who God has called me to be, and if I know who God has created me to be, I know what I want to see. Yeah. And so my question to anybody who knows the calling of God on their life, but don't know how to tame their desires, well, my question is, what in your appetite have you adjusted? Yeah. yeah. What have you been consuming mm. that you have not adjusted? So you, you mean to tell me you see a new call, but you're still consuming pornography? You mean to tell me you see a new call, but you can drink yourself till you black out. You mean, so, so you don't have, either you don't have an adjustment in your appetite or you don't have as good of a vision as you think you do. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's either vision that's going to break you through or adjustment that's going to break you through. And I think if our generation can grasp that, we can find a generation that finds freedom, not only just in um in addictions but just in identity in yeah. purpose in calling there are so many people who have tried to define themselves based on their desires and i believe that if that is the continuity of how you think of yourself you will end up neglecting god yeah yeah, yeah. because you think that you can define who you are yeah. and and i think there has to be really just a reset on our taste buds, a reset on what we consume. Um, even for me, like I remember being, being a young adult, being a teenager, and I was like in a space where I had recently just like really given myself to the Lord. I was saved, I'd been baptized, but it was just like, I was keeping old friend groups attached to me. And I did an Instagram detox. I unfollowed so many people who were secular, so many people who were still in the world. And it was not because of them, but it was because I knew that I needed to detox my desire. Mm -hmm. I knew that my desire had to be cleansed. I couldn't desire the same things because I'll end up falling into it if I still have a desire for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the worst things I hear to this day is that's just how I am. Oh, bro. That bothers the crap out of me. 
Because My there, God. there are certain things that will change naturally as you get older, but there are certain things you have to intentionally work toward. I used to be a hot head. My parents and my siblings can attest to this. I used to just be angry yeah. for no apparent reason. Like I just had a chip on my shoulder. And my response in that was, that's just how I am. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Yeah. That makes no sense. 100%, it makes bro. no sense. I think when you when you start taking your walk with Christ more seriously, he won't allow you to say certain stuff. Yeah. There is a certain thing. Now I grew up in a holiness church where they call Backwoods Church. It's very small, only about 30, 40, 50 members. And a holy hush is a thing. Yeah. And, and I think because my daily prayer began, God, let me think about what I say before I say it. Let me intentionally go to this place if it's for me. God, fix my thought process. Yeah. Because what I think is everything is not personal. Everything is not base level. You have to work towards controlling your emotions, controlling your tongue and what you say, and controlling how you walk. I think it is a trick of the enemy for somebody to say, that's just how I am. No. Because it is not how you were created to be at all. A lot of what is involved in our Christian walk, it, it, it is not emotional. It's intentionality. It's it's calculated moves. Yeah. There are certain things us as Christians we cannot do. We have to separate ourselves from the crowds we know we should not be in, from the friend groups, from following certain pages. From now, there's there's one thing that bothers the crap out of me, and it's what social media does to our minds is deeper than we think it is. Yeah. Unfollow those Instagram models. Unfollow those Twitter pages. Unfollow and Twitter's for middle dead. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Twitter is another world, brother. Yeah. I have to delete Twitter off. Of my oh, phone bro, I'm crying. All. Now, are there good fruits coming from Twitter? Yeah. Are there good people with good intentions on Twitter? Yeah. Absolutely. But as a whole, you know. There's you just have to separate yourself, make it a clear difference in between what you're doing and what the world is doing. Yeah. And here's oh, I got I got a lot to say, <laughs> because for some people, it's like, well, how do I know my appetite? Yeah. The reality is your algorithm will show you your appetite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your algorithm will show you the stuff uh, that you desire. Yeah. I can go to my page right now and give my phone to anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've trained my algorithm. See less of this. Yeah block, delete. I don't want to see this mm -hmm. because I have detoxed <laughs> my appetite so much so that all of this craziness, you won't see sexy red on my for you. Ain't no way. No, you tired. won't. I'm tired of that. You <laughs> won't find it. And it's, and it's because I have understood that what I'm seeing is all is a direct cause of what I've consumed. Whatever it is that you consume on the inside of you will always come out of you. Yeah. Be careful what you digest. Everything that you internalize, whether good or bad, is coming out. And so I think that we have had we have had um, multiple conversations. We even recorded a podcast on temptation mm -hmm. um, where it sort of started to talk about um, different strategies for overcoming temptation and things of that nature. Uh, but one of the things that I did want to sort of piggyback on is getting us to a place and an understanding of not only is your desire and your appetite a reflection of what you have already consumed, but it also is a amalgamation of just who you can be at times. Right. Yeah. Who you are. And I don't think that it's bad to have desire. I don't think desire is bad. Mm -hmm. I think if we don't have boundary on our desire, mm -hmm. then it can be bad. Yeah. Right. Because you still need to know what you like. Yeah. You still need to know what you're interested in. You still need to know things that matter to you. Mm -hmm. However, if that is the end all be all, oftentimes you will miss God. Yeah, absolutely. because God will be in a place where you don't necessarily like. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. God said, "You." Homeboy was like, "I'm not finna go talk to these people." <laughs> Why would I talk to these people? Yeah. Moses did not want to go talk to Pharaoh. Yeah. You think Abraham wanted to leave? It's like. 
Jesus quite literally did not want to die. Yeah. And so if the end all be all of our decision making is what we like, we will miss God yeah. because God oftentimes will distance you from your desire mm -hmm. to point you to your destiny. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can get a greater revelation of who God is, then we can understand God naturally himself opposes our desire. Absolutely. One of the greatest arguments that I've like seen is like, if the Bible was man-made or man-written, why does it oppose all of man's desires? <laughs> it's because it's divine. It's because yeah. it's inspired. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think getting a better grasp of what we consume, but also knowing that that's not final yeah. is, is ideal for maturing and developing not only in just our relationship with Christ, but in our destiny, in our eternal calling. Yeah. I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of people don't know who they are because they don't serve. Hmm. I found that when people serve in the church, wherever they're serving, um, they tend to find who they are in Christ, which inevitably leads to who, to what their journey destination actually is. Um, when, when you deep dive into only doing what you want to do, going to church and leaving, uh, being involved in nothing, Keeping your relationship with God as a prayer when you wake up and a prayer when you go to sleep. There's no studying in between Sundays and Sundays. You will never find who you are ever mm. because you're not searching. When you when you sit down with a team and you talk about Christ, there's a yearning to be closer to Him naturally when you do that. Right. But if you're not around people that have that natural knack of wanting to know who they are in Christ, you will likely not find who you are in Christ. So a lot of the desires and tastes that they don't know that they have is because they haven't searched for it. 100%. It right. won't just come to you. That's not how Christ works. He's there to help you. Or the Holy Spirit is there to guide you. But Christ won't sit there and force information in your head. He's going to ask you to seek him. He's going to ask you to find him. But you have to be intentional about how you're doing it. Right. That, that, that is a, a very twisted mindset to think that Christ is going to force information into you. That he's just going to... Don't get me wrong. He'll place you in the right places. And he won't... I believe that he will go after the one and leave the 99 where they are. But to be intentional about where you are in Christ is what he wants. He'll meet you halfway. You just have to care enough to go. Yeah. You know, that's that, that's a very tiring thing is to allow all your resources and the people around you to make your decisions for you. It's not going to work. 100%. It, it reminds me of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, yeah. but it's the glory of kings to seek it out. Yeah. And so it's like, why do we think that God's going to do all of the work for us? God is not going to do all of the work for you because if he does all of the work for you, you'll go back and be dirty again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he's, he, if he's the one that's going to clean your dirt every time, mm -hmm. then I, <laughs> I remember I bought my first pair of like very expensive sneakers when I was like 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I grew up in a very fixed income home. Yeah. We didn't have a whole lot. Yeah. And so what we had was what we had. Yeah, and so my mama had bought me these sneakers I wanted. It was these Yeezy 350s. I don't mm. remember. It was like, I, I remember it very vividly. Um, but it was, they were like uh, these cyan, like ice blue Yeezy 350. And I remember that the bottom, like, you know how they have icy bottom sneakers. Yeah. I remember the bottom is icy. Mm. And so I, I I wore them to school one day and I didn't check the forecast. Oh, my goodness. Mm. And when I left, <laughs> all I saw <laughs> was all of this rain. Yeah, God, almighty. And I became immediately overstimulated <laughs> because I was thinking... I can't get this dirty because of how much it costs me. Mm. See, most people are okay with getting dirty because they don't understand the cost of their destiny. See, if they understood the That's cost good. Good. of what it means to have calling, of what it means to have purpose, then you wouldn't walk the way that you walk. You wouldn't act the way that you act. You wouldn't say the stuff that you say because you would realize that your destiny was worth a life. Yeah. 
Yeah. You'd realize that your calling is worth a life. Yeah. You would realize that the purpose that God has given you was worth the life of his one and only son. And if you understood the cost of your destiny, then you wouldn't you wouldn't go out here and act the fool. You wouldn't go out here and get dirty because you knew you know what it takes to be clean. Like if I don't know if I'm a sneakerhead. Like when I say I'm a sneakerhead, I'm a sneakerhead. And when you get the icy bottom of a sneaker dirty, it takes bleach. Mm -hmm. It takes lights. It scrubbing. takes scrubbing. Mm -hmm. It takes rags. It takes what? It takes a whole lot to restore something mm -hmm. that if I never would have got it dirty in the first place, yeah, I would have never had to go through it. Mm -hmm. And so true. I think that understanding the cost of what it takes to be who God has called you to be is ideal. It's important and it is absolutely vital um for our generation bro yeah it's a it's a dangerous game to play playing with your soul like that <laughs> it is and and as as a 25 year old that's that's moving into like official adulthood like knowing that i'm good and i'm rooted and, and now like life has began for me in so many different areas but i wish that certain things i would have never stepped into as a young man because now I'm undoing what I did when I was 20. And here I am five years later, sitting here, trying to scrub on my spiritual man, trying to get that dirt off of him. But you got to realize the amount of time you put in getting it dirty is the amount of time you have to put in to get it off. 100%. And you know, I feel like we, if you don't put yourself in a position to screw up your spiritual man, he will be happy. <laughs> I promise you. Now, having to undo a lot of it is not easy, but you would much rather clean off and start fresh then leave it dirty and a lot of you know it's it's inevitable people that aren't for you that come to you that that seek after you that try to find you twist your mind and distract you but when your spiritual man has nothing over his eyes to cover it the faster you can see who is not for you and what is not for you mm -hmm. there's so many veils over faces of spiritual men and they cannot see but the the faster you pull that veil off the faster your discernment kicks in, the faster your desires go away, and God can really work through you. He can't work through you with the dirty soul. That part, bro. That part, man. Um, last thing I'll say before I wrap up um, for us, I think when when we sit here and we look at desire from a really practical lens, it can seem almost... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It can seem like it's antagonizing someone who struggles with desire. However, if we could genuinely just grasp the spiritual implications of the things. Yeah. Like, I feel like we would find so much more freedom. Because I think what the enemy likes to do most times is he loves to gratify the flesh so that we as humans would neglect the spirit. Mm, that's good, Jack. Yeah. We get an easy fix in our flesh so that by the time the spiritual consequences come to play, it's like, no, you're not depressed. You're experiencing warfare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring some prayer warriors around you. Like, what are you talking about? No, no, this is not, this is not physical. This is something that's spiritual. And if you don't have the lens to see in the spirit, it's because you haven't starved your desire long enough. Yeah. The reason why fasting is so important is because fasting neglects the flesh so that the spirit can actually see. Absolutely. So that by the time the enemy comes to me, I'm like, oh, it's not even you talking to me crazy at my job. It's the devil. You're trying to throw me off. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to get me to cuss you out. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not going to it. not heed to mm -hmm. my desire. Exactly. exactly. When you start to see things in the spirit, then you will always have a greater uh, love and appreciation for what God uh, is doing in and through not only you, but the lives of everyone who is around you. Everybody, it's Mike Harris here. Thank you so much for turning in to In The End Podcast. We love all the viewers, all the feedback. If you're on Spotify, if you're on YouTube, Apple Music, share, like, comment. If you're on YouTube, click here to subscribe. Be here for another episode. We'll see you in the next one.